Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to see how we can transform and load the data in the lake house with Spark in Microsoft Fabric. So I hope you have been watching all my videos sequentially and as well as doing hands-on in order to understand Microsoft Fabric. So in the previous video, I have given a very, very detailed information regarding the usage of notebooks within Microsoft Fabric. Now in this video, I'm going to cover how we can transform the data as well as load the data into the lake house using Spark in Microsoft Fabric. So let's move ahead. But before moving ahead, I do recommend all of you guys to connect with me on LinkedIn as well as on Instagram. And I'm going to leave the link in the description box. So let's move ahead. And I'm going to open my Microsoft Fabric Workspace. This is my Fabric Workspace. I'm going to open my data engineering uh, visual or my data engineering experience. So from here, I'll go to the workspaces. You can select any workspace. And from here, you can simply click on new and you can click on the notebook. So this is what we have done even in our previous video as well. The moment you click on the new notebook, you will land into a page something like this, right? This is what we have seen as well. So in the previous video itself, we have connected workspace 01 lake house. You can name your notebook anything over here, whatever name you want to provide to your uh, notebook. And then if you see here, we have connected our lake house. We have seen how we can uh, connect to the lake house and read all the tables or even the files for that matter that are present within the lake, right? And now what we are going to do is we are simply going to read the data which is present in our lake house. We are going to transform it and we are going to load it back to the lake house. So now if you look at this customer, right, this I've explained even in my previous video that you can simply drag and drop this customer, right? So the moment you drag and drop this particular customer table, it is going to show you the command to directly read from the customer's table. That is what it is going to do, right? So I have already written this command over here and let me just delete it and just run this for you guys. I'm just going to run this. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to read the data from the customer's table, which is already present in my lake house. And then I'm using the display command to display this particular data set. Now, after that, I want to filter the data. Now to filter the data, I can simply use the DF customer dot filter gender equal to equal to M. So I'm filtering out on gender M. So you can see the gender option over here, right? It has null and it has F as well. So everything is being filtered out and I'm only taking gender equal to M records over here. Now, this is how you can actually apply a filter to any data frame. Now, similarly, I'm also reading my sales table. So simply drag and drop, right? You'll be able to read the sales data set. So now, in this second, in the 30, 32nd command over here that you see, the 32 uh, that is written over here. So I'm reading my sales table into a data frame over here. So let me just execute this as well. So I am what I'm trying to do over here. I'm trying to I'm trying to read my sales data frame. Now, after reading my sales data frame, you can see it has a lot of different columns which are present over here, right? After doing this, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to group by customer key. I'm trying to group by customer key. Now, if you look at this particular data set, it has customer key involved over here. I'm trying to group this data by customer key, and then I'm trying to get the sum of unit price. Now, if you look at this particular customer key, there's a unit price column as well. So for each customer key, I'm trying to get the sum of unit price, right? So that is what is happening over here. This is how we perform aggregation. And then I'm saying dot alias total sales. So that is what I'm calling this as my total sales, right? So I'm grouping by customer key and using the aggregate, I am doing sum of unit price and then I'm aliasing it as total sales. So basically I'm calling that new column as total sales, right? That is what is does, that is what this alias does. And this round, this round is nothing but it is a function because it is just trying to make sure the decimal places are up to two, right? That is why we have this round function. And even to use this round and sum, what we need to do is we need to say that from pyspark.sql.function import star, 
we need to say this because what will happen is the sum and round, right? These are nothing but these are SQL functions. These are PySpark SQL functions that we need to import using this import statement. Now, once these are done, uh, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to say that display my data frame sales, right? Display this aggregated data frame or this aggregated output. And that is how you can see that the output, the aggregated output is displayed with customer key. For each customer key, what is the total sales? So you are getting this um, data as an output. So then what we are trying to do, so we have created one more data frame at the top, which is nothing but DF customers, right? So we have also created this data frame customers, which is all of this data. So here, what we are trying to do in the next step, we are trying to join the customers and the sales using the customer key and we are having a left join. So this is what exactly it is about. Now, if you look here, how do we do a join in Spark? We do it just exactly this way. So DF customers dot join DF sales. Okay. And what is the join condition? This is my join condition. And then what type of join it is, it is left join, left anti join, right join, inner join, full outer join. So all that you can mention it over here. And then we are assigning it to the final data frame DF join. Now, once this is done, once the data is joined, I'm adding a new column okay called as date purchased now if you have to add a new column you can use dot with column using this dot with column you can mention the new column that you want to create like for example here it is date purchased and then the expression that will be used to create this date purchased okay now this date purchase will have some value right so how that value will come so that expression we need to provide so what we are doing we are saying date of first purchase this is a column right in df joint in df joint we have date of first purchase as our column use this column and cast it as a date so if you look at the top i will show you so you have something called as date of purchase Let me just show you over here. So you can see that you have this column date of first purchased. Now in our final data frame, we have this. We are trying to convert this date time, right? You have the whole timestamp over here. Now we are trying to convert it into the date format and we are calling it as date purchase. So that is what we are trying to achieve over here. So now uh, we are taking this column and we are casting it as a date. So this is how you can even cast the data types and you can create a new column. And after this, from this whole data frame that you have got, we are just selecting few columns. We don't want to select all the columns, right? We are just selecting few columns and we are just displaying the final data frame. And this is how your final data frame looks like, right? For a particular customer name who belongs to so-and-so country, this is the date of purchased and this is the total sales, right? Now the data doesn't really matter here, but the thing is how we can actually achieve different types of transformation in these notebooks, in the Spark notebooks. Now, once we have this final data frame, right? We have joined two, we have taken the data from two tables. You can take it from two CSV files as well. And then we have taken the data from Lake House. We have joined it, we have filtered it, we have aggregated it. We have added a new column to it. We have taken selected columns and then we want to store this data. Now, how do we store this data, right? What we can say is we can simply say DF final, whatever is your data frame dot write dot format delta, write it in a delta format mode overwrite save as table notebook table. Now, the moment you run this command, now let me just simply run this command. Now you will see that it starts writing this particular data frame df final that you have got in form of a delta table over here. Now, if I run this, you can actually see a notebook table has come over here, right? This is exactly how you can, uh, you know, create a table as well as, you know, do the whole transformation and write it into the lake house. So you will have a lake house attached, right? So automatically it is going to write to that particular lake house. So if you want to read it, right, you can simply drag and drop and you will be able to read the data from here. Now, let me simply run this. 
right now you can actually see that you are even able to read the data over here right so this is exactly how it works if you want to append the data right you can append the data as well now if i run it again right with the mode as append it starts running because it is reappending the data appending means it is adding the data again right to that particular table so that is how it works and you can also read this data over here so this typically acts like if you are coming from a background where you already know databricks or you are aware about the spark or you are aware of even about the pandas then in that case this is pretty simple for you guys you will be easily able to do any kind of transformation into from the data frames any addition of the column deletion of the column dropping of the column all that transformations that you apply on a data set that all that you can apply and you can load it into the lake house so i hope you like this particular video and do remember to like share and subscribe and in the upcoming video i am going to show you how you can create a proper you know how you can schedule it how you can you know put it in a, uh, a data pipeline as well so thank you so much for being till here but do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel thank you so much